Hi and welcome to the Tales from the Gulag. Today is the 2nd of April 2020 and today I would like to join in the China blame game. I'm quite happy to go on blaming China. I have been calling this latest outbreak from China the Xi Jinping virus. The official name for the coronavirus is COVID-19. Ever since Tedros Adhanom made the pronouncement on behalf of the World Health Organization. Before that, it was the Wuhan coronavirus. Why the change? Because he was concerned that the Chinese would not be stigmatized by calling out the origin of the disease. Why were they not concerned about naming diseases after their place of origin before now? That's how it's always been done. No one seemed to be worried about stigmatising the Germans by calling it German measles or the Spanish or Spanish influenza or Middle Easterners because they had Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome or for that matter, nobody seemed to be worried about stigmatising Africans when they had Ebola because that was named after the river from which that disease came. So why the change? Because the World Health Organization was not so much concerned with the welfare of the Chinese people or necessarily with our welfare as much as the welfare of the Chinese Communist Party. Communists, including Tedros Adhanom, who dominate the WHO, and they are concerned that the largest com- communist nation should not be blamed for the outbreak, and so China gets a free pass. We're told by many, including by Christians operating from what I think is a false sense of piety, that to pin the blame on China is wrong. It's racist. After all, Christians are taught to forgive and forget and to love your enemies, right? And That's correct. But I, for one, am happy to go with the blame game and I happily call it the Xi Jinping virus to keep responsibility for this pandemic where it belongs. I think those that call it by the alternative, the CCP virus, standing for the Chinese Communist Party virus, are pretty much on the mark and I am great with that particular name for it. And for that matter, I also applaud Donald Trump for going ahead and calling it the China coronavirus, especially as it is in response to the uh, Chinese communist attempt to shift the blame, trying to pin the blame on the US military of all things. Why are they not concerned about naming diseases after their place of origin Now, well, it's clearly to cover up for their own failed ideology and for the buddies that try to put it into practice. Communists tend to stick together. Well, at least that is until they actually gain power and then they eat each other. But meanwhile, in their pursuit of the cause, they do stick together. And what astounds me is the pseudo-Christian response what is a misuse of this teaching on forgiveness. So allow me a digression here. There are Christians who say that God doesn't punish sin. Don't believe it. God does punish sin. God doesn't punish sin, we are told. Oh, yes, he does. Consider just some instances that come to the top of my head. Noah's flood. What was that all about? Sodom and Gomorrah. What was that all about? The Israelites who rebelled against God and Moses during the Exodus when they were complaining that they were short of food and water and the other wonderful things they had in Egypt. Do they say, well, that was the Old Testament? Well, okay, what about the New Testament? What about Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts? 
They had promised an offering to the Lord and withheld it, and worst of all, they lied about it, and God struck them down dead. What about 1 Corinthians? Paul's warnings about misusing the Lord's Supper. <coughs> this, he says, is why some among that congregation had fallen ill and some had died. Oh, and what about the judgments of God in the book of Revelation, the plagues and the famines? The God of the Old Testament and the New Testament are one and the same. The God of the Old Testament also made the promise of a saviour and held out the promise of salvation to all who turn from their sin and call on him. That same God fulfilled his promise by giving up his one and only son. And the God of the New Testament is also the one who has punished people for sin. And he warns that the time will come when those who refuse to repent will be judged and will be cast out into the outer darkness. A warning to Xi Jinping, if I may. You, sir have openly engaged in warfare against God and his son. You have persecuted his church. You have persecuted his people. You also face judgment before Jesus. And that day, when you do finally meet Jesus, will be the most miserable one you have ever had. And worse still, it will never end. Unless you repent, and turn to Jesus. I hope that Xi Jinping does turn to Jesus for his sake, but so far I see no evidence of that. Yet. I hope that when you face Jesus as your judge, you still think your war against him was a great idea, and that being an evil global dictator was worth that day. But that's up to you, sir. And the same goes to the likes of Pope Francis and other Christian false teachers who blame the virus on our failure to look after the environment. Read Genesis chapter 3. Sickness and death come as a result of our rebellion against God. Yes, God does punish sin. He will punish sin. We will all be held accountable for the things that we do. The good news is that he is willing to forgive and his son has paid the price for our sin for those who repent and turn to him for forgiveness. For those of us who believe and are baptised, who are in Christ, we don't face this final judgment. And when we do suffer hard times, whether it be sickness or financial stress or whatever, we will see that God has a different meaning for us. He uses our suffering and our hard times for testing and strengthening our faith in him. Sometimes God has to give us a proverbial smack in the head to get our attention. And then it is wise to pay attention, isn't it? Now, back to the China blame game. Why is it appropriate to blame China? Because they're responsible. I have no issue with Chinese people. I like the ones that I have met. But imagine that there is a factory down the road from you that is spewing out noxious fumes and making people in the neighbourhood sick. If you listen to the counsel of some, you would let them go on and just simply go on handing out the respirators and encourage people to stay indoors. Well, is that wise? No. The problem is not fixed. It is only fixed when the polluter is called out and held to account for their negligence. China is responsible for one epidemic after another arising from practices like the wet markets where wild animals are caged stacked on top of each other and then sold for food. This has gone on for decades. 
starting when Chinese people starved because of the failed policies of Mao and his communists. The party there is aware of the problem and yet refuses to do anything about it. And worse, when it has broken out, their response is to cover it up. The doctor that first identified that something was up and tried to warn his co-workers was detained, forced to sign a retraction and told never to speak of it again lest he face prosecution. Funnily, he died of the coronavirus. Funny that. The Chinese Communist government lied to the world about it, claiming that the disease cannot pass from animal to human. They allowed it to spread. They delayed alerting the world to the problem. They allowed the disease to spread. When it, if it had been dealt with even just a few weeks earlier, it would not have become the huge problem that it now is. And now they enlist institutions like the World Health Organization to help them cover it up and to shift responsibility. What do you call it? When you engage in an activity that you know is risky, and then you try to dodge the responsibility when the shit hits the fan, pardon the language. The legal term, I believe, is criminal negligence. I, for one, am happy to blame China and their Communist Party in particular. The world's economy cannot be shut down every few years because the Chinese like bat soup. If I'm sounding annoyed and angry, darn tootin' I am. There is one group that is clearly responsible for the whole mess that the world is in at the moment, and that is Xi Jinping and the communist thugs that run China. I, for one, support calls to ban permanently travel to and from China until they at least shut down these markets. We can't have it. I also support calls to claim reparations from China for losses arising from their criminal negligence. Maybe as a part of this process, we can look at seizing Chinese assets, money in their bank accounts, nationalising their ports in our country, then selling them off to Australians to help recoup the cost of the disease to our economy. It is only when they are held to account for the things that we can hope to change, or else we treat China like the hostile pariah state that it now is.